Whether it's fair or not, Tonka's GoBots historically lived in the shadow of their far more successful, far more popular contemporaries, Hasbro's Transformers. But the GoBots had a shadow of their own, and in that shadow lived a significantly less successful, far less popular line of transforming alien robots. They looked like knockoffs, they felt like knockoffs, but they were legitimate, legally licensed figures that not even Hasbro had the authority to stop from tempting consumers' wallets. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is Select Converters. In the early 80s, you couldn't move through a room without stepping on a transforming robot licensed from Japan, rebranded for the Western audience. Or so my father said, instead of apologizing. <laughs> Transformers, GoBots, Voltron, Robotech, the other Voltron, the other Voltron. All you needed was a new mythology, new packaging, and patience while the product made its way across the Pacific Ocean. Of course, it didn't hurt if you also had the budget to market that new mythology with a 65-episode animated series and or comic books. Maybe a lunchbox, a Halloween costume, a voice changer, pajamas, anything that would keep your brand in the forefront of a 10-year-old's nanosecond attention span. But just because you don't have the budget doesn't mean you can't play the game as long as you're willing to adjust your expectations. Look, no matter how much money Hasbro poured into Transformers or Tonka committed to GoBots, to anyone over the age of 12, it was all just a single monotonous blaring advertisement for the exact same thing. They were all colorful plastic and metal parts that moved around to look like other parts. And who could really tell the difference? You asked for the car robot, you got a car robot. Do you realize how many car robots are out there? How am I supposed to tell the difference? Who can tell the difference? <laughs> and that's exactly what Select Toys was banking on. Why spend the money to advertise transforming robot toys when the bigger companies are going to do it for you? The early 80s was a textbook case of supply and demand. Consumers were demanding more transforming robots, and toy companies were scratching and clawing at Japanese licenses, trying to get whatever they could to repackage in the U.S. to supply. Tokotaku Toys designed and manufactured figures for several properties featuring transforming robots, including Battle Armored Battalion Dorvac, Galactic Ranger Saisuger. F I knew I was gonna f these up. What is it? Sasu Riger. Okay, yeah. these are all a bunch of names I am not familiar with. Battle Armored Battalion Dorvac, Galactic Ranger Sasu Riger, Armored Insect Core Beatross, Super High Speed Galveon, Super Dimension Fortress Macross, and Super Dimension Century Orgus. <laughs> Takatoku manufactured several of their own designs, but also licensed out properties to other companies who would manufacture different versions of those toys or simplified versions using cheaper materials at a lower price point. However, Takatoku filed for bankruptcy in 1984 and their designs were purchased by Bandai, many of which were then licensed to Hasbro to become the Transformers. I'm no lawyer, but as an amateur historian, I can tell you that Takatoku's pre-existing licenses with the other companies, like Mark Toys, remained valid. Along with properties they had licensed from Takatoku, Mark Toys produced their own lower price point lines like Action Robo, Robocar, Gokin Robo, and Bird Robo, and were more than happy to sub-license all of that to an American toy company called Select. This may surprise you, but Select was in business to make money, as much money as possible, as fast as possible, investing as little as possible. There was a transforming robot craze going on, and they wanted to exploit it. Select executed the low-end, low-investment version of the proven successful Japanese robot import strategy. One, license the toys. Two, create a new mythology to tie all the disparate intellectual properties and aesthetics together. Three, have a guy you know who draws design new packaging. Four, leech off the transforming robot awareness being created by the bigger companies with marketing budgets. Five, <laughs> In 1984, Select Toys released Converters, a line featuring a diverse assortment of brands brought together through the loopholes of bankruptcy and international licensing. Select Toys licensed whatever Mark Toys put in front of them, and Mark Toys put everything they had out there. 
It's the reason you can have a single toy line with the Valkyrie from Macross, who would later go on to be Jetfire in the Transformers, as well as a robot peacock and a slot machine. Uniformity of packaging and branding did all the work, carried all the weight of tying these toy lines that were from different intellectual properties, different scales, and in some cases, different aesthetic approaches together the same way Hasbro did with Transformers. And while the lack of die-cast parts for the majority of the figures and the lack of any mainstream marketing approach made them feel like they were an illegitimate line, like they were knockoffs, fakes, imposters, they were not. Converters were an oddity not just for being an unusual collection of transforming robots ranging from what is this thing even that I'm looking at to that's actually pretty darn cool, maybe even cooler than several pieces released in GoBots and Transformers. But because, as a brand, they were able to deftly navigate a path through highly legally fortified international waters against much larger, much more wealthy companies to deliver a product that exploited all the previously existing Japanese design and manufacturing work using exactly the same methods as the big corporations spending a lot less money. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a like. Hit subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Thank you to those who already are. Share this video with all of your odd friends. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please consider contributing to our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy. Hey, if you're starving for some prime converters content, please go check out Mantis9's channel, who has reviews of nearly every converter that was released. I queued up his converters playlist while I was researching this video and saw some things that I have never seen before. Some things that made me say, what is this thing even that I am looking at? And others that made me say, that's actually pretty cool, maybe even cooler than several pieces released in GoBots and Transformers. That's Mantis followed by Nine Nines. Link in the description below, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll probably. Link in the description below. All right, click the link. Cut.